Hello, welcome back. This video is going to show you how we can partition your data in R into train and test data and how we can run your first logistics regression model. Okay, so um, in, in machine learning models or data analytics models, uh, we saw this for forecasting models where we actually split the data into train and validation. Uh, I will use validation and test data interchangeably. So. Um, for this video, if you hear me saying validation data, I'm actually referring to the testing data and vice versa, okay? Um, what we need to do is to write a couple lines of code so that we can actually split, randomly select some of these rows in our data frame and store it for our train data. And some of rows, um, mutual exclusive, um, for our testing or validation data. So usually um, we do have several ways to do this. We do cross validation. That's something that I'm going to explain when we go over Lasser and Bridge regression models. Um, we can do it that way, or we can specify certain probabilities. Let's say that I would like to have 80% of my data set or rows here goes to, um, I would like 80% of my rows of my original data go to train data and 20% go, should go to my test data, right? So for that um, reason, um, I would like to use the sample function, okay? If you'd like to figure out how sample function works, you can just call the help button and it's going to direct you to uh, one of these um, libraries here on the right. Um, and then you can definitely look over there. Oh, actually, I shouldn't have done it this way. I'll do this. We'll bring the sample function uh, right here. Okay. So the second one is going to show you how the sample function is used. Uh, it has a very nice, very easy um, usage. So what it does is it takes on the first spot the number of different types that you would like to generate. So I would like to say two because I want uh, the sample uh, function to generate index set, which is going to keep values of one or two, right? If it is one, then I'm going to be uh, referring that as my train data. And if it is two, it's going to be labeling the specific rows into um, test data, okay? And it's going to tell me what is my range. My range is the number of randomly generated numbers uh, that I would like to have in this in this index set uh, is equal to the end row of my data. It's going to basically return me 856 observations. So end row and the name of the data frame that you put in, in this function is going to give you the number of rows in your data set. And I say that the uh, the one the rows that you select those right, um, and then you don't put them back. That's why I put you know, replace true, and with uh, eighty percent of the probability label them one, and twenty percent probability label them two. Okay, this is what uh, you know sample function understands from these parameters. So you can change this to um, you know. 70% versus 30% if you want to, but I would like to keep 80% of my data for training my logistics regression, and I'm going to test it on 20% um, of my data. All right, so let's, um, let's also call this seed information. So what this is going to be helping us uh, as we work on multiple editions of logistics regression is this. So if you select your random number seed generator, this can be a number, but I just plugged in one, two, three, four. Okay, so then I come back later and I would like to also regenerate these, um, uh, these indices for my training and testing selection purposes. I am, as, you, as long as you keep the same seed, it's going to give you the same uh, train and testing data. Okay, that's what is going to be helping us do that. That's why it's important to set the seed to the same number because we will like um, the repeatability of this of this work, right? So I don't want 
to deal with different training and testing data whenever I run this model because I haven't even trained it, I haven't even tested it. Um, so I want the same training data and same testing data um, in my um, in my R file so that you no know, I could um, keep working on my logistics regression. Okay. So I will disable this comment for the sample information. Now let's run line 20. Um, as you can see, just created a vector, a vector of numbers that's composed of ones and twos. If you like to display the values, um, you can just literally call index set. You see that um, it is just ones and twos. So ones are going to be belonging to the row index of this my data. Let me show it to you here. For example, the first row is going to be my training data. In my training data, second row, third row, and fourth row are going to be all my in my training data. Well, the fifth row is going to be my testing data. Okay. This is the easiest way to do it. Um, there might be some other ways, uh, but this is very nice and very easy. So now what I do is okay, go to my data and look at the row index, right? So the left of the comma is going to tell me which rows to select. Okay, as long as the row index set is equal to one, keep it in the training data frame, right? It created a data frame for me. And then as long as it is, um, the index set value is equal to two, keep it in my test data frame. So now I created test and train data frame and you see that uh, I split them based on the 80% and 20% draw. Okay, so what I will do now is I'm going to a, a train a logistics regression um, so that uh, I can have the parameters to be tested on the test data set. So you can click on test and train. You see that you do literally see um, same information, same columns for sure, right here. Um, but this time training data has 80% of the overall observations and testing data has 20% of the overall information. This is useful because um, you would like to uh, actually first train your model and see with the validation data or testing data, see whether you overfit or underfit. Um, so the articles that I posted, one of them has a very good uh, explanation of what overfitting and what other underfitting is. Please go ahead and read those. Okay, so how do we run our logistics model? Uh, well, we are going to be using stats glm function okay we don't need to install any 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 package we can just literally call glm glm stands for generalized linear models so let's get the help menu in front of us um and then you can see some hints here what each term means but um it is going to be very similar to the lm function that we used for uh, traditional uh, multiple linear um, uh, regression models. Okay, so what we do here is we make sure that we do have the data information here set to train data. Remember, we are still training this this model. We are not going to be using on test data right away. We will first need to train it, and then um, basically give the name of the column information, um, name of the columns, right? Each, each column names as an independent variable, right, except the last one, have tried or not. So let's come over here. You see that have tried tilde, right? I want to represent have tried as a function of all other um, independent variables on the train data. And I would like to select the family to binomial. This basically indicates that I am interested in classifying this uh, last information or the dependent variable have tried values, okay? Binomial means zero or one, okay? So I can come over here and then look at different families. Uh, in this specific example, we do have only two outcomes that we would like to predict, zeros or ones. So one stands for that person tried it, zero stands for that person did not try it, or um, yes, did not try it. And the way that we tell this to GLM is to actually set this parameter to binomial. Okay, so let's run this. All right, let's run the summary of the model. 
Um, we do see another table uh, similar to um, similar to uh, multiple linear regression. We do see that some of these terms are not significant, statistically significant. Some of these independent variables are not statistically significant. And some of them are statistically significant. Well, um, what is the first rule that we need to do here? Well, you need to identify the p -value, largest p-value here, drop it from your um, logistics uh, regression model, rerun it, and then see if there is any um, any independent variables that are violating uh, uh, violating the p-value less than 0.05 inequality. If it does, redo the uh, dropping and then rerun the analysis, or we could directly utilize the step AIC function, stepwise um, logistics regression modeling this time by using step AIC. Remember, it's going to be doing this adding and dropping uh, different independent variables for us. Um, for that reason, we have to uh, load a mass library. And then if you remember, all we have to do is to create my model too. This is the step AIC model by importing our model into step AIC. Let's run this uh, line 34. Um, you can see the iterations, different um, different um, iterations that um, this step AIC function tried for us. As you can see it uh, removed some columns, it put them back in, it removed them again and put them back in. Um, if you didn't use this one, you would have done this manually and we didn't want to do it manually, okay? We wanted to save some time. Let's take a look at the summary of my model two uh, and then let's check out the ANOVA table. You see that um, all independent variables here are significant. That is good. And of course, the number of independent variables um, got reduced down to one, two, three, four, five, six. It was previously, I think, more than 15. Remember, we had some categorical data. Um, that's why it was more than 15. Now it is just one, two, three, four, five, six. So on the next video, I'm going to explain um, the basics of logistic regression and how we can actually start classifying um, the dependent variable.